build a model of the overall economy, we need to focus on certain variables, certain macroeconomic variables. The first one is the unemployment rate. The unemployment rate, of course, is trying to measure how much unemployment is in the economy, how many people are, are unemployed. It has a particularly precise definition, however, and that is a fraction of the labor force that is unemployed. The labor force itself is defined as the sum of people who are either employed or who are looking for work. So it's either employed or looking for work, and then you're in the labor force. The measure of employed and looking for work is based on a survey the government has of households around the country. So to be in the labor force, you not only have to have a job, which is kind of obvious, you'd be in the labor force, but you have to be looking for work. And once you add those two together, you get this labor force. Of course, you can imagine just from this example of the government uh, surveyor asking if someone's working, looking for work, it's somewhat in the eye of the beholder. For example, you could imagine someone, maybe a, an older person around 50 or 55 who, who was laid off from a job and has, has spent a year or two years looking and finally says, this gives up, we're just going to just stay at home. And that person literally drops out of the labor force because they're not looking for work. It's not counted in the labor force, but you could imagine, well, in some sense, they're kind of looking for work. They just got tired and are doing some other things. So it's really somewhat ambiguous, this definition of the labor force, but nonetheless, you have to have something like that in order to, to properly measure the amount of uh, unemployment in the economy. Let's consider an example of people in September 2013. I'm going to measure people in millions. So, for example, in September 2013, there were 246.2 people in the non-institutional population, 16 and over. So, 16 and over people not uh, not in institutions, institutions like jails, for example, 246.2 million. The labor force at that point, again, remember the sum of employed plus looking for work people, was 155.6 million. Of those, from this survey the government was able to determine that 144.3 were employed and 11.3 were unemployed. We know also that 90.6 million were not in the labor force at all. They were part of the population 16 and over, but they were neither employed nor looking for work. To get the unemployment rate, therefore, you divide the 11.3 by 155.6 million. So you get a fraction, 0.07, and report that as a percentage, which is about 7%. So that's the unemployment rate. Sometimes Sometimes economists also look at a different measure, just looking at the total amount of employment compared to the population. So in this particular case, you have total employment is 144.3, the population is 246.2, the ratio of those is 58.6. That measure is sometimes more useful because it doesn't rely on this difficult determination about whether someone is in the labor force or not, whether someone is looking for work or not. This issue has become particularly important uh, in, in recent years because it, it appears that quite a few people have dropped out of the labor force because of tough economic times, and so they're not counted as unemployed. Even though they're effectively, they lo maybe lost a job, and they look for work for a while, and they're not looking, they're no longer counted as unemployed. So the unemployment rate is probably too low because of that, and economists like to look at other measures like employment to population to, to really get a, at least an alternative measure, if not a better measure. So having described how the unemployment rate is calculated, Let's look at what happens to it over time uh, and how that relates to these recessions and recoveries that we've talked about. So this is a picture of the unemployment rate uh, going back to the 1940s in the United States. And you can see on the vertical axis, we have rates ranging from under 3% in the early 1950s to uh, over 10% in the early 1980s and uh, getting to those high levels again, 10% uh, or so in the 2007-2009 recession. In every recession, unemployment rate increases and you can see that quite clearly that was a gigantic jump in unemployment in the in the period of the most recent recession jumped up in the, all these recessions here quite a bit and then in the recovery it starts to come down so that's a pattern which is universal any model that we have of the economy tries to take that into account as to explain why unemployment goes up in a recession why do people lose their jobs what what is it generates this behavior but also note there's some more there's sort of longer term trends in unemployment as you look through this is a, it's sort of just kind of going up in this area. It's coming down in this period of time, kind of going up again. So on top of these shorter run fluctuations, there's some longer term trends in unemployment. And the stories that we develop, the models that we develop to explain these has to really try to deal with that phenomenon as well. In fact, that's a very important phenomenon. It may help you determine whether there's a problem with economic policy, monetary policy, fiscal policy. Maybe it could be better. Maybe there was something better about it when unemployment had, had lower trends and some bad when unemployment is higher. We need to think about that. But these are, this is the material you look at to determine that.
You've been watching Understanding the Unemployment Rate. For more of my economics videos and other educational material from the Hoover Institution, please visit policyed.org.